Committee questioned the public protector on why she investigated matters that should have been settled in court. Advocate Tulima Donsela objected, vigorously defending her independence. This did not sit well with MPs intent on their oversight role. Tuli walks on water. That's the impression gained. You are beyond reproach, as is your office. You can shake your head, but that is the view of people out there. Madonzela's deputy advocate Kevin Malunga wrote to Parliament distancing himself. MPs raised the matter with the Justice Minister during his department's budget vote. Addressing an ethics seminar today, advocate Tulima Donzela offered her apology. I would like to express an unconditional apology to Parliament as a whole with its 400 or so members, <coughs> its chairpersons and, and employees. I cannot excuse my conduct on that day in that I did show my frustration, which is very uncharacteristic of me as a person, but generally improper for an ombudsman to show your frustration. Frustration aside, she still stands by her words on her officer's independence, but felt she'd behaved inappropriately in her responses. Lenders declined to comment on their apology. Asana Mbeche, SABC News, Parliament. Earlier, our contributing editor, Vuyo Mvoko, spoke to the public protector. Madam Public Protector, what I'd like to understand about the apology is whether you're withdrawing the remarks that you made to the parliamentary committee or you are withdrawing the adversarial or confrontational nature um, in which you made those remarks. I have made an unconditional apology to Parliament for the manner in which I expressed myself in parts of that conversation. In, in retrospect, I have concluded that at times I did come across as adversarial. Regarding the remarks I made, it's the manner in which I made the remarks. I am still of the firm view that this office is fully accountable to Parliament in the manner prescribed in the Constitution and the law and not in the manner things were done on that particular day. So, so you regret having made the remarks the way you made them. But what about your frustrations? Do you still harbor the frustrations that you expressed on the day? I'm no longer feeling frustrated because Parliament has made a decision that there will be an engagement with my office around what exactly is the best balance between Section 181.5 of the Constitution and Section 181.2 read with Section 181.3 of the Constitution, which are those provisions around independence, impartiality, and subject only to the Constitution and the law. And Section 181.3 that says no um, institution should interfere with the functioning of Chapter 9 institutions, while Section 181.5 says these institutions are accountable to Parliament for their activities and functions. Is, is it your view that at the moment, or as things stand, um, that is not clear? I thought everything was clear because if you recall, this office has been around since October 1995, and there's never been really any debate on any specific case on why the public protector dealt with any specific case since Advocate Bakwa and then Advocate Mushwana. So it does appear, though, since that conversation that there may be different views on how some of the accountability has to be exercised. And now we've agreed then that a forum will be created for a, a constructive dialogue to but resolve... That those differences. But you will agree that both um, your predecessors uh, never really carried themselves in the manner that you carry yourself. Uh, you've elevated that office. Uh, a lot of your supporters feel, in fact, that by doing what um, you've just done, you may just have bowed to political pressure. What do you say to that? No, certainly I didn't bow to political pressure. Firstly, nobody asked me to apologize. I did so because 
every person has their own moral compass. Incidentally, two days after my appearance in Parliament, I spoke to my team and I said, I don't regret anything I said in Parliament, but I do regret the way I said some of those things. So that's my own moral compass, that I believe that you have to communicate with people decently. There's no need to show annoyance or frustration. You, you can carry your message across um, in a quiet, constructive and dignified manner. Well, to someone who says, well, you may have compromised the very points that you feel strongly about, big mistake, and you're going to leave to regret having made this apology. I will never regret, uh, live to regret to, for making an apology. I think humans, we're supposed to behave decently towards each other. My belief is that I have to always treat people decently, not because I'm in charge of them or because they're in charge of me. Conversations should be pleasant but firm. And that conversation was pleasant and firm, but there were parts of that conversation where I showed a bit of my frustration. And those are the parts of the conversation where I regret. So no one should expect you to hold back? I should be expected to speak softly but carry a big stick. That was our contributing editor, Vuyo Mvoko, talking to public protector advocate Tuli Madonsela.